Well, joining us right now is Congressman Doug Collins, Republican from Georgia, who asked Nancy Pelosi to rephrase those comments. She did not. So why did you request that those comments be taken down? Because they were against the, frankly, how we're supposed to talk on the House floor. This is something that may seem trite to many people in the world, especially with everybody saying what they want to say and saying it how they want to say it. But when you come to the House floor, it is a place of dignity, it's a place of decorum, and it's a place where we debate the most serious issues of our time. I don't believe this issue yesterday, this resolution was there for any other reason except political jab at our president. But it is a place where we have to, if we don't maintain decorum on this floor, then we devolve into something that we don't want to be. And she is like everyone else. She is subject to the rules. She broke right. the rules, and that's why we did it. Congressman, did you, do you believe that she actually actually did clear her remarks to the parliamentarian, number one. And number two, did you know that this was coming up and therefore knew you had to stand up? I'm not sure if she did or not. I'm a, you know, she said she did, but it obviously, her, by using the word, she didn't because it mm -hmm. was clearly undone. Um, we've been preparing for this because they, they've been pushing the limits, pushing the limits, pushing the limits uh, the entire time. And so we were just sitting there, and, and frankly, she, there was some you know, questionable remarks she made early in the speech. But when it came to this, it was just clearly over the line. What is sad yesterday for the American people and their political vendetta to get this president, they actually pass a resolution that they cannot read on the floor of the House. That shows you how bad what this is. What do you is. mean? That means that they can't read the title of the, of the resolution, which is exactly what her words were right. based because on. Because it would have condemned the president. Condemned the president's racist tweets. When you cannot see, you cannot establish motive or personalities to the president calling him a racist on the floor of the House is not allowed by our, law, our rules. The resolution itself has problems in it. And we pointed this out in the Rules Committee before it ever mm -hmm. came to the floor. This is nothing but to get the president to make a mockery of their own leadership abilities because they don't like this president. That's all this is about. Well, you're, the title that you're talking about is House Resolution 489, and the title is Condemning President Trump's Racist Comments Directed at Members of Congress. That is correct. They can't and, say it. All right, nope. so, so Congressman, after um, Steny Hoyer came out and uh, dressed down the boss and said uh, she's out of order, uh, then they had a vote whether or not to strike her words from the record. And while it clearly was against the rules, the Democrats, this is party line vote, decided, you know what, we're going to leave those in the record, right? Yeah, this is the sad part about this whole thing. She could have took, she could have shown leadership, which she did not. And she said, could have said she takes down her own words, and she could have let it stand. But instead, she forced her party to actually join her in violating the House rules so that no punishment's attached. What kind of leadership is that, Ms. Pelosi? You're the Speaker of the House. You're the one that should be the epitome of the rules and decorum of our House. But yet, you basically made your members vote right. to allow your words to stand and to let you speak again. To me, that just shows the ultimate disrespect. Right. Respect for the office she holds. Congressman, we have to raise the debt ceiling or not. We have to get some type of asylum rules changed because there's chaos at the border. The USMCA has got to be looked at. You're not doing anything productive. All it is is symbolic votes that embarrass the country. Talk about embarrassing. Nancy Pelosi's got to be somewhat embarrassed about the lack of communication with four powerful freshmen, pure proof of a fracture between them on CBS, their squad talking about the speaker. Listen. Are you speaking to Nancy Pelosi? Our teams are, are in communication. Our chiefs are. are but shouldn't it be a face to face? I want to know if you are She's speaking. She's the new member, not the speaker. No, but she I want to know. She has every right to sit down with her in any moment, any time, with any of us. Yeah. She is Speaker of the House. She can ask for a meeting to sit down with us for clarification. The fact of the knowledge is, and I've done racial justice work in our country for a long time, acknowledge the fact that we are women of color. So when you do single us out, be aware of that and what you're doing, especially because some of us are getting death threats, because some of us are being singled out in many ways because of our backgrounds, because of our experiences and so forth. But I think Alexander, the question are you interested be, in having a conversation face to face oh, absolutely. with Speaker House Speaker would, Nancy absolutely. Pelosi? Why wouldn't she sit down with her? Yeah, no, absolutely, and we've reached out to that end. What a mess! Yeah. That, that's amazing to me that members of their, her own party uh, were refusing to go talk to the speaker. I mean, it, this is a two-way street of communication. I've never seen communication not be a two-way street. I know as a member in my own party, I, if I wanted to talk to the speaker, I would go talk to the speaker. This idea that their teams are talking really shows you the chaos. If the American people want to see the chaos in the House of Representatives, that clip right there shows you why we can't get anything done on our border except talk about it, yell about it, and do anything. But they won't even vote for money to right. fix the immigration on the border. This is exactly 
exactly why our House is broken right now and why the President is leading and why we in the House have to continue to maintain the decorum that well, we have. Congressman, it was just last week where it was Nancy Pelosi versus the squad where uh, during one of their congressional breakfasts, she made it very clear, if you got a problem with me, you come and talk to me. You don't tweet something out on Twitter. And then it all came to where it is. And now after the president made his go back comment, it seems like the entire Democratic Party has had to unite behind the squad. Politically, what does that do for the balance of the Democrats? I think the interesting thing that has happened here is they, the Democratic Party this year has embraced the socialist uh, aspect of their party. They've embraced the big government aspects. They've embraced the idea that America is not as good as it should be, and they want to fix it by making government better. But I think it's a really a communication breakdown. When the Speaker of the House said, if you have a problem, come talk to me, and the interview that, we just, that you just aired said that they really don't have a desire to do that, I think there's a communication gap there that shows that they have no desire to work within the system. They yeah. have a desire for themselves, and it's a very self-centered position. Congressman, yeah. did you think that the president's tweets were racist? No, I did not. I did not think they were racist, and I think we, that was talked about yesterday. What do you think about the president's uh, message yesterday when he was doubling down? Look, uh, regarding my go back tweet, if you don't like the country, leave. What I think is happening here is let's have an honest conversation about what's happening in America. You may not like the ideas. You may not like what's going on. You may not like what's happening at the border. But instead of actually condemning not being uh, silent on what's going on, my question is why are they silent about a flag, a Mexican flag that was raised over an American facility? Why are they being silent about someone who attacked a facility in Seattle? Why are they always seeming to find that they mm -hmm. can conveniently ignore that or conveniently well, ignore answer, other members of the what's the answer to that? Why? Why, why, why? I, I, because they don't because they don't like what's going on they would rather have open borders they'd rather have their own way they were they mm -hmm. enjoy a socialist perspective more than they enjoy the freedoms that right. we have in america congressman there's going to be a motion to impeach uh i think today how the how is the speaker going to deal with that it'll be interesting to see i think the speaker is you know she's really having almost a co-speakership with the four freshmen and herself maybe they'll get together and actually discuss how they're going to do it but they'll probably figure out a way to either table it or just put it up there uh, al green's been doing this for months and all really years they don't like the november 16 election let's break this down very simply they don't like the president they don't like the good economy they don't like that things are happening they believe the november 2016 election was a farce they've tried every investigation in the world and it's still mm -hmm. one thing is true the president is still president and we're moving forward and they are in chaos. And next week you got Robert Mueller, so that should also be quite interesting. It will be. You think it'll happen? I believe so. I believe it'll happen, and we'll be able to hopefully uh, see the answers that come from it. Okay. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us this morning. It's always good to be with you. After a very busy night. Yes.